Hugo, thank you very much. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Um, I get the chairs, so I probably ought to sit down. I'm get, actually going to stay standing because um, uh, it's more energetic. So, um, Ori, fantastic. I love the idea of powering the IoT revolution. Uh, you're over there. Um, so in the 1960s, we had data coming uh, at us um, in terms of transaction data, getting stores. In the, in the 1990s, it was internet-connected uh, laptops and uh, desktops. And now we're in the midst of the uh, smartphone revolution. And Ori is now going to power the IoT uh, revolution. Um, and this is all oil. Brilliant. But it's totally overwhelming because it's crude oil. Data in its own form, and we think is valuable, but in reality, it is not valuable. It is not valuable because you have to refine it and you have to process it. Um, you have to generate the insights, whether they are predictive insights, prescriptive insights, or just root cause analysis. But ultimately, you need that data to be refined in order to generate actions that will lead to an impact for your business or your organization. Now, um, oh, I've just realized I've got the screen there. That's quite useful. Um, the philosophy at Spark Beyond is really to start from the end and work backwards to data. And in order to get the right answer, one must first ask the right question. What does that mean? That means we start with a problem and we work our way backwards. So my problem is sales. What are the drivers of sales? OK, weather. But what is it about weather? Is it the rain? Is it snow? Is it, is it the temperature? OK, so it's rain. But what is it about rain? Is it two days of rain that affect my sales, or three days? Is it lots of rain? Where's the threshold? And every question leads to another question. Now, humans are pretty good uh, at working out the kind of strategic level, hey, what's my problem? What am I trying to solve? Um, but the trouble is, as we work through that pyramid, and work through towards the, 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 the really nitty uh, gritty questions at the end of that, that, that line, we get worse and worse. Why? Because of the, uh, the cognitive bottleneck and our, our, our problem with low dimensionality. Now imagine a machine that generates millions of ideas in minutes, discovers patterns, connects the dots, and asks the questions one would never think to ask. And not as a black box, but as a glass box. I read that slide because it's at the core, obviously, of Spark Beyond and the next generation of artificial intelligence and its application in organizations. In 2013, Saggy and Ron, our founders, um, were sat in Netanya, I believe, um, and uh, had asked the key question, which was if Google had crawled the web for text, why, and organized it, why had nobody done this with code? There's 100 billion lines of code in GitHub alone, and there's lots of other repositories out there. Why had nobody indexed it, organized it, and, and created a library of unique code blocks? Which is, of course, what they ended up doing. And over a period of six months, they created uh, the start of a, a very, very comprehensive library of all the code that had been written uh, in the world. And they enriched it. They built the metadata around it. Uh, uh, this, this code block is particularly good if you've got a name in a data set or a place in a data set or a timestamp or whatever. And the next step was, of course, how do we apply this library of data? And they realized that in the world of data science, it was incredibly valuable. Because what they could do is take any building block, string it together with other build building blocks, and what effectively create a question. So in a data set like a, a weather data set, trying to understand sales, it could ask the question, for example, is it rain that affects the sales? Is it three millimeters of rain or four millimeters of rain? And it could constantly ask these questions. And they then built the algorithms to apply this library of, of code to data sets. And to, to be able to do that at very, very, very high velocity, so in the order of a million questions per minute. Now, what they built is the, the raw engine, the ability to ask questions. And of course, being data scientists and being technical individuals, they couldn't help themselves but kind of go upstream and downstream from that and start building out a platform. So upstream, it's the ability to connect data sets 
uh, very easily to, to the engine. Uh, there's hundreds of data sets uh, that are openly available that are useful to our, our, our client organizations, uh, weather being one of them, of course, but you've got Wikipedia, you've got census data, demographic data, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, the ability to plug in uh, organizational data sets with the client organizations. And then downstream of that, of course, once you've got your insights, you either want to manipulate them, visualize them, understand what exactly am I being told in order to take an action off it, or you want to build a model. Um, and of course, the modeling aspect of data science today is quite commoditized, so there are hundreds of models out there, so we've just plugged them all in. And what we've ended up with is a, uh, a, an end-to-end -end problem solving platform that allows a user, a business person, uh, probably an analytical in, in, in by background, to, to understand what is going on in data. Now, the outputs that they get from uh, such a platform, from this engine, is obviously the, 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 the root cause um, data patterns that exist in your data. But of course, it, you can turn that into predictive models and you can turn that into prescriptive models. Um, the machine, by its own right, is creative. It's asking questions independently of the human being. And therefore, it's coming up with, with ideas to test in the data completely independently. It is exhaustive in that it is asking a million questions a minute. So if you let it run for 30 minutes, you're talking about huge amounts of, of data being looked at and being tested. Um, and of course, it's dynamic because it's independent of the individual. It can be powered by electricity. You can let it run all night, all, day, all week, et cetera. And so if you're wanting a, a, a daily report, a minute by minute report, or a weekly report on what's going on in your, in your field, um, the machine will just uh, uh, automatically give you that. So um, it's, uh, it's a problem-solving platform. Operationally, it has a, a pretty uh, a transformational impact on a data science or an analytical team. Um, it collapses the time to value. So a data science team can work through problems that much faster, which means that the cost of failure is lower. You can try more things. You can look at different uh, uh, problems. And of course, your data scientist, your analyst, uh, and your business person is no longer thinking about, I need to test the weather and I need to test the rain, whether the rain affects it. They are now talking about search space. I'm going to give the machine this search space. And my intuition, to, to come back to uh, um, uh, Alan's point earlier, is that what affects my sales are the following data sets. And I'm going to give that search space to the machine. And I'm going to let the machine do the work, the lower order work. And so I, as a human being, am elevated to think more broadly about the problem. Um, so that's the operational value. Um, but in reality, I, 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 uh, I came across Sagi and Ron about a year and a half ago. And I joined Spot Beyond for three reasons. Um, number one, um, what an amazing team, some amazing people. Um, and I'll leave that to one side. We can talk about that later. Number two was that I, I had a, an epiphany. Philosophically, what Saggy and Ron had done is to automate a, 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 a core cognitive function of the human brain. And this is game changing. So when we look at the history of AI over 50 years, I am persuaded, I am absolutely sure, that what Saggy and Ron will be one of the breakthroughs that have happened uh, in, in that history. And there's a long way to go, but, but the ability for a machine to, to ask the questions independently of human being and effectively having, having the same cognitive function as a, as a human analyst is utterly phenomenal. Now, uh, the other reason I joined the company is because Sagi and Ron and the team they built around them are phenomenal individuals. Uh, and they recognize the power that they have in their hands through the, the machine they built. And so we have the opportunity as a company to do great things in the world. And I think we are all aligned with a, an amazing mission that we truly believe in. Um, and therefore, we work with client organizations and, 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 and um, on a number of problems. And ultimately, we want to have a, a positive impact over the course of the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Does it work? Well, um, we have worked in uh, over 20 industries all over the world. Um, this is my show off slide. Um, and um, we've grown completely organically from word of mouth. Our marketing is awful. When I looked up Crun um, Spot Beyond the first time, I looked up on Crunchbase, and um, uh, there was hardly anything there. The website was pretty poor, still is. Uh, and we'd grown entirely from people telling each other about us, which is an amazing, uh, an amazing thing. Um, 
And, uh, but today we're 160, we're global, we're, um, uh, and we're growing incredibly rapidly. Um, we're massively committed to uh, spending a, a very large proportion of our time on, on um, social impact as well. Uh, so beyond the day-to-day -day problems that our clients face, but, but into things like sustainable agriculture, cancer research, prison violence, and so on. Um, that's Spark Beyond, uh, but I wanted to uh, link it with uh, w w you know, where we are today. Um, I, uh, in late 2017, I wrote, I co-authored a report for the Mayor of London about AI. And um, uh, at the time, uh, I was being introduced to Spark Beyond, uh, and I thought, who are these guys? I've never heard of them. Uh, they, can't, they can't be important, because I've not heard of them. I've been analyzing the AI market. And um, obviously, m with my first interactions with Sagan Ron, I was blown away, that philosophical kind of aha moment of what, what, what these guys are doing. Um, and the other thing that happened was, of course, my attention was turned to uh, a small nation in the Middle East uh, that is growing unbelievably fast in terms of its effect on the world. And the, the tech innovation that's come out of Israel, obviously, as we all know, is, is totally phenomenal. And over the last year and a bit, I've had the honor and pleasure to go to Israel many, many times. And I've been blown away but every time by what I see and by the people and how they're, 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 they're impacting the world with what they do. Um, so um, uh, Hugo, thank you very much for having me personally here. Uh, and I, I'm delighted to be part of Spark Beyond and to be part of the innovation uh, scene in Israel. Joining me is a friend of mine, uh, Erez uh, from McKinsey, who um, uh, hopefully we can have a conversation uh, about how uh, Spot Beyond as a technology integrates into uh, how a consultancy changes the world for, 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 for their client organizations. Thank Erez you. is uh, the global head of analytics ventures at McKinsey. He's been McKinsey for 10 years uh, and was the architect of the partnership between Spot Beyond and McKinsey. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so let's sit down. This is ah, we, okay. we do actually use the chairs. Um, so um, I'm going to kick it off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to ask you, Erez, um, how did, why um, do you see uh, uh, McKinsey partnering with a technology like Spark Beyond? What was the, the original intent and where is it at now? Um, so first of all, the, the, the results are what matters, right? And you, you mentioned it. Um, this is not a theoretical exercise. Um, it sounds philosophical and, and exciting, but it's not. Um, and um, we have delivered more than 100, close to 150 engagements, client engagements, meaningful client engagements together, um, well over 1 billion uh, in bottom line impact for clients. Um, and that's what matters. That's, that's, that's our uh, mission. And, um, and so this is successful, a successful partnership. And that's the first thing that is worth mentioning. Um, the second, you mentioned, you, you asked about the rationale. Why did we do that? Why would a company, McKinsey or a company like McKinsey, um, aim to do that? And um, the reason is that um, it might sound trivial now, but four or five years ago, it wasn't. Uh, driving impact for corporates with AI is difficult, difficult stuff. Um, it's not about uh, just uh, insights or modeling or data. Uh, it's not just about strategizing. Uh, it's bringing all of that together. It's about change management. Um, it's about uh, domain expertise. You can't drive meaningful change in pharma or in healthcare or in retail or in, in insurance without understanding the topic. And you can't do it without understanding that people are what drive corporates. Um, and so you have to be able to drive change. But you also cannot do it without 
the best access to data, you can't do it with the best engines, the best AI engines. So bringing that together it was, was our mission always. The point was to try to serve um, Allen's top layer. When Allen Feld presented those layers, the top layer was the corporate AI users. And that's really our mission. And so coming together, McKinsey, kind of with our DNA of change management, with our DNA of domain expertise, and Spark Beyond, the best uh, uh, insight engine, AI engine that we could find, bringing that together uh, created a lot of impact. And I'm very happy that three, four years later, um, we've done enormous change. Yeah, it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, we learned so much um, from working with McKinsey because obviously as a technology company, we kind of felt originally that everything would be solved through technology. And of yeah. course, this is fine for the, the far distant future of in 100 years time, but today it's fundamentally still about human beings. Um, and I, I must say, the partnership from our angle taught us about how you connect the dots between the, 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 the engine and, 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 and what it's capable of doing and the real messy world of business uh, uh, where things are imperfect. And I suppose um, the, the obvious next question is, um, what, what would you see as being the key considerations for um, uh, uh, an organization or a business that wants to integrate artificial intelligence in a meaningful way I into its processes and its, and its existence? I think that's a very important question. Um, and I think it goes to the why. Um, uh, why are you considering AI um, as a corporate? Uh, what are you trying to achieve? Uh, some organizations, um, unfortunately, are um, wanting AI as part of their story just because they want AI as part of the story. And we can talk about that segment um, and why that's happening. But most um, actually are wondering about AI because they want to make better decisions. They want to have more effective processes. They want to have better uh, customer experience. And that's what you have to remember. Right? So that's the goal, that's the aim. Um, and so when you're thinking about a powerful general purpose platform <coughs> like Spark Beyond, or Spark Beyond specifically, you have to understand that that's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to drive, is to try to drive impact, to drive better, uh, better service for your customers, if that's, if that's your business. Um, and so you have to use, to try to use AI for that. Right? And so you mentioned, for example, some of the traits of Spark Beyond. Spark Beyond allows you to ask lots of questions, to get insights on a daily basis, uh, as explainable as possible. Well, if you're a smart corporate, you'll use that to encourage collaboration between the business side and the data side and the analytics side, to sit together on a daily basis in a room and think. Think about the insights that are coming out of the data. Some of them are irrelevant. Some of them are problems that come out of the data. Some of them are super impactful and new and interesting insights. Some of those are actionable, s things you can do something about. And when you're using the platform and the data and the analytics for that, then you change the ways of your, you, you're changed, your ways of working. That's impactful. Um, and so the better, the better uh, corporates uh, in implementing AI, what we found, um, have made that kind of uh, into part of how they use AI and how they use Spark Beyond. Uh, corporates who are, um, and again, unfortunately, there are quite a lot of these as well that are struggling, who are thinking about it as an IT question alone or an anal analysis question by it, siloed analysis question, actually don't get impact. I think it's... Um it's so reflective of, uh, you know, a lot of what we've learned again with, with you guys, which is that the, it, there's so m it goes so much beyond the kind of organizational questions of how do you organize an analytics function or whatever. Yeah. It's, uh, what, you know, coming back to your original point about the why, it's like it, there, there needs to be an intent in the company and a, and a true desire that goes from the, the sponsor who might be a C-suite of executive down into the, the champions who might be senior managers in the marketing division or whatever, through to the end users who want to use a next, a next generation technology. And one, one of the problems that certainly we've found, and again, has been uh, something to overcome uh, for these organizations, is that it does change the way they work. And so there's a pain in doing that. Yes. Um, and, and there's an education in doing that. Yes. Um, 
uh, which is which is fascinating. Um, you can't underestimate the pain and the friction that come with um, meaningful change. You can't say, I have a machine that changes everything and then hope that it's just going to change the ways of, of corporates and large organizations, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands sometimes employees that have been doing things for the last 20, 30, 40 years in one way and it's just going to happen like magic. It's a very complex question um, and a risky question for an organization. So you have to think about it as that and as, as you said, I think that's exactly right. There has to be top-down and bottom-up uh, enthusiasm, commitment, and willingness to pay the, the, the price and, and walk through the pain, if you'd like, uh, because the, the, the outcome is, is real change. Yeah, yeah, and and um, th there is one um, uh, organisation in particular that might be worth a a headlining just because it's it, it's a manifestation of what we've done so well together. Um, a, a retailer in in um, in Europe who who used uh, Spot Beyond with um, with McKinsey uh, and and used us so cleverly and, and effectively, and it does it is driven fundamentally by by the client organisation. Um, and they started with one, one uh, problem that they defined, which was uh, how to optimize their pricing. Um, but from there, having, having identified how they use data to truly optimize their pricing, they were able to move on to other problems uh, in a way that they'd never done before, uh, which included, um, for example, the, the macro assortment, so which products to which stores. It included micro assortment, like how do you actually put the, um, the products within the stores. Uh, it included their store optimization. Uh, a store location optimization. So they then looked at uh, our store network. How do we optimize that? Where do we put the new stores and so on? It included things like sales forecasting. So w from a nub of a, of a new way of doing things, they were able to get wins, which built the momentum. It built the ROI. It built the, 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 the reason for continuing. And, and today, uh, the, what they've been able to do with you guys and, and, and with our technology powering their, their, their analytical teams across multiple functions is completely phenomenal. I mean, the, the effect on the on their on a bit dar has been phenomenal. So that's the uh, for me, that's the manifestation of what might be a philosophical change. But uh, on the ground in real can make such a massive difference in terms of the integration of AI. Absolutely. Um, Erez, thank you very much. And Hugo, thanks for having us. Thank you, Hugo.